everyone. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you're all doing well. Hope you had a great Christmas, a great festive season. And um, yeah, the end of the year is here already. And this will be my last video of 2023. It's going up on New Year's Eve, but if you don't get a chance to watch this until the next day, then Happy New Year. Um, hope 2023 was a good year for you and I hope 2024 will be even better. Um, the end of this year has been a bit of a funny one for me in terms of kind of my guitar playing more than anything. Um, I've been feeling stuck in a bit of a rut really with sort of my approach to playing the guitar and what I'm playing when I'm actually kind of sitting down to pick up the instrument. And um, I really wanted to dedicate the time between Christmas and New Year, you know, that void where nobody knows what day of the week it is. I um, wanted to dedicate that time to practice and to sort of sit down and methodically work through some things and objectively look at my playing and sort of figure out where to go next. Um, I got some things for Christmas, which are definitely aiding that cause. Um, I picked up Adam Levy's book, String Theories. Um, it's a book that I've been looking at online for the last few months and I was kindly given it as a gift. It's done the rounds on social media. A lot of people, a lot of guitar players are really enjoying it. It's more of a philosophical book, I suppose. It's quite methodical in terms of giving you some concepts and some ideas to work on and give you a bit of an approach for practice because that's always been the thing that I've struggled with is that kind of structure, right? It's kind of where do you start? What do you work on? So I'm looking forward to diving into that. Um, and I will be doing a video here on the channel about my experiences. So if you're on the fence about picking it up or, you know, there might just be some things in there that I can sort of share with you that might help you if you're in the same position as me. So yeah, that's what I've been working on. I'm going to show you a couple of licks and some ideas from the opening jam that you would have just heard there. Um, so stay tuned for that. And before we get into that, I just wanted to take a second as well to thank everybody, given that it's the end of the year. Um, I just wanted to thank you all for the support. I know I've only really started posting regularly again since the sort of autumn of this year, um, but I've absolutely loved the process of creating videos again, and I hope you've enjoyed them. Um, I have big plans for 2024. You know, we're carrying on the momentum. I'm not going anywhere. Um, looking forward to next year and what YouTube has in store. Um, I've got some good video ideas and it's been great to get to know some of you guys as well in the comments and in messages, especially releasing my own music, you know, this winter. Some really, really lovely feedback. And I know those videos and original music is never going to be everybody's cup of tea. Um, but for those of you who did take the time to check out the songs, um, yeah, just know that I'm so grateful. And um, yeah, here's to 2024, whatever that has in store. Hey, that rhymed. Um, so back onto this whole thing of practice and some of the things that I've been working on that I wanted to share with you. Um, this guitar is one of the big components as to why I've been enjoying practicing these last few days. Because, you know, sometimes new gear, whether it's a new pedal, a new guitar, a new amp, it can all influence what we play. It's definitely a big catalyst for change for me. If I pick something up that's new, it does take my mind in a slightly different direction. And this is one of Carl Longbottom's guitars. This is the S4, which is his take on the kind of Stratocaster or S-type guitar shape. Um, a really classic design. Obviously the Strat's been around since, what, 1954? Um, it hasn't changed too much during that time. Um, but Carl has done some cool alterations to his design. Um, and he's kindly lent me th this guitar for the last month or so just to get to know it a little bit and to you know do some videos and just share my thoughts um it's not sponsored in any way i'm not being paid to promote any of his equipment um he's just a good friend and i like to play guitars and experience new guitars so of course i would be happy to put it through its paces um so yeah all of my opinions are very much my own not obliged to say anything in particular um, but this guitar has really helped during these last few weeks with my practice. Um, as you know, if you've watched this channel for any length of time, that I am predominantly a Strat single coil player. Um, I have a, I guess it's like an early 2000s Fender USA standard Strat. Um, it's had a couple of modifications, new set of pickups from House of Tone and, you know, that sort of stuff. But 
on the face of it, just a regular strap. And um, it's kind of home for me. Three single coils, five-way switch. Um, it's just kind of like a tone that I have a good reference for. So when I pick up a different S-type guitar, I have a pretty good point of comparison. Um, but the thing that makes this guitar different, or at least stand out for me, is the fact that this guitar, and unfortunately, YouTube is not gonna convey this. I wish you could all be here to hold this guitar, but this is hollow. It's chambered, so it weighs next to nothing. So that in itself is a big difference. You know, ergonomically, this feels very different and therefore it's making me play differently. And that hollow body is really just a kind of a breath of fresh air, I suppose, um, because sonically it really does change the character of the guitar, at least to my ears. Um, every guitar that I've ever played, if it's a light guitar, I, you know, in terms of weight, it just feels more resonant and more alive. I don't know if there's any truth in that, but I definitely feel the lighter the guitar, the more resonant they can be, or potentially the more resonant they can be. Um, that's something that I'm definitely noticing with this guitar. Now, if you match that with the kind of chambered body, if you've ever played like a Gibson ES-335 or anything that's kind of semi-hollow, you know that there's kind of like a hollowness, um, obviously, and a kind of airiness to the tone that you get from those guitars. And apologies for the kind of ambiguous, nonsensical guitar adjectives that mean very little to anybody. Um, so yeah, I will try to articulate it and explain it as best as I can. But yeah, there is just like an airiness around the notes um, because of that sort of hollow body. It just seems to have a bit more sustain, has a bit more clarity and a bit more sort of like top end definition. And then when you're kind of coupling that with the sort of out of phase positions, like positions two and four, so neck and middle and middle and bridge, it just kind of emphasizes that even more. So that's really influenced my playing and I've been really exploring keys which incorporate a lot of open strings. So like E major, you know, for example, has been a key that I've had a ton of fun exploring over the last couple of days, quickly becoming my favorite key in music. You know, there's so much you can do with it. Um, so yeah, I just thought I would show you a couple of things, um, break down some of the elements of that intro. And um, yeah, if you've got some time off now, you know, before you go back to work in the new year, then here's some, some things to, to have a play off. So, like I mentioned, open strings. Oh, and by the way, in case you're curious, um, I will leave a link to this guitar in the description. So if you wanna get some more specs, and um, find out more about Carl, it's all down there. So, back to the guitar playing. So, opening lick or opening phrase of the intro was this kind of like open string cascade is what I tend to call it. Um, I don't really know where I've taken this from. It's probably a hybrid of some stuff that Joey Landreth has played and some stuff that Ariel Posen has played. Um, obviously those guys often play in open tuning, so I've probably transposed it a little bit. But it's just this idea of cascading down the major scale to the chord that you want to arrive on. So it's this lick here. So in terms of strings, we're going open, high E string, fourth fret B string, sixth fret G string, open B string, first fret of the G string, so that's our major third of E major, and then just resolving it to kind of this one chord, which would be E major in this key. It's a little bit quicker. The key for this lick is to kind of really get every string resonating. You don't want to, you know, be dampening any of the notes on the way down that that figure. So it's really just a case of kind of getting your fingers in the right position. It takes a little bit of practice, but you can start to then do it quicker as well. So it's a good little exercise. I find it also very versatile because you can resolve it to any chord within your E major scale, so that we've just resolved it to E. You can do the same to A, which is the four chord. Resolve it to the five chord, which is B. 
and you can even resolve it to sort of like your minor chord, so like the two minor or the six minor. So resolving it to F sharp. Or resolving it to C sharp minor. So just a really kind of nice versatile lick. It just has that kind of like ethereal and very melodic quality um, to the key, which I, I really enjoy. Now the next thing that I want to show you is again, speaking of melodic, um, it's making your chords, when it's kind of like your major chords in this key, for example, um, it's making those chords more melodic and less static, which is the word that I like to use. So what I mean by static is when you're kind of on a chord, so if you're playing sort of like an E, and say it's kind of like a, a bar or a few bars of E, Obviously we can play E here, you know, we can play it in this sort of like caged shape. Um, we can play it here, here, here. So we've, we've got options of where we can play E. But what I like to do is embellish that further. So, you know, over that measure, if the band is kind of like holding down the rhythm, you've got some room then to experiment with some other intervals and some other phrases. and. Even when you're playing unaccompanied, like I was doing in the intro, I was trying to incorporate that. So I wanted to share what I'm thinking in those sort of examples and give you a few to, to look through. So let's say, for example, we're playing over the one, right? So let's say we've chosen to play E here, which is kind of this very standard root on the A string, seventh fret, and it's kind of this E major chord utilized in this triad. What I like to do is I sort of picture the scale for that one chord, right? So I know we're in E major, but even if it was the A chord, which is the four chord, or the B, which is the five chord, over each of those chords, I'm thinking about the respective major scale for that chord. I'm treating each chord as its own key, almost. So here, when I'm in E, I'm picturing, first of all, the E major scale over this chord. And what I like to do is I like to then target the main notes within that particular chord. So it would be sort of like the fifth, which is your B, and then your major third, which is here on the ninth fret on the B string. Because those are all the really strong intervals that give that chord its, its tonality. And then what I like to do, and it's a very kind of like country Americana inspired thing, is I appro approach each of those inst intervals intervals um, using chromatic lines so that is approaching it in semitones up to that particular note that you're targeting so I ended up kind of playing a, a sort of phrase like this so all of that is all in E major all I'm doing is I'm approaching the fifth so this B but I'm approaching it from a whole tone below but ascending chromatically, and then hitting that major third that I mentioned, then just descending, this time hitting the B string on the seventh fret, and then back to your, your kind of roots. And that's just taking this shape of E major. And then you can do the same thing, you know, in terms of the same approach on another chord. Let's take the five chord, so that B7. So I'm using the same shape that we just used for E, but I'm playing it down with my root here on B. And again, I'm just going to think about the B major scale. And this time I'm, I'm again going to find those notes that I want to target. So, you know, I've got my major third here, I've got my fifth, and I've got my root. But then with B7, we have that flat seven interval. So we've got that A notes that gives it that, this note here, which gives it that sound. So that's the note instead of the fifth that I'm going to target. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play over B7 something like this. I can't remember exactly what I played, but it was something along the lines of this. And again. So all 
I was doing there was kind of eff effectively going up the scale in an arpeggio. Adding that chromaticism in here, going up to our major third. And this time I'm descending, so I'm going, I'm starting on the root here on the G string on this B note. And I'm chromatically ascending to this A note, which is our flat seven, which is giving that, you know, seven sound. And then you can resolve it to wherever the next chord is going to be. So in this example, you know, after the five chord, maybe it's going back to the one, back to E. So you can just simply resolve it by maybe targeting the major third of E, which is a semitone below this A. So we've got... So those sorts of ideas I'm really enjoying at the moment. Really all I'm thinking about is the actual you know, chord that I'm playing over, I'm thinking of the relative scale for that chord as if that chord was its own key. And then I'm just kind of exploring the intervals of that chord and approaching it using things like chromaticism um, and sort of targeting those very dominant chord tones. And it just adds a bit of movement and a bit of melody, a bit of tension and color to your playing. Um, so just wanted to quickly share that with you all. Um, that's pretty much about it for today, I think. Um, let me know if you enjoyed this video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up if you did and leave a comment down below. Let me know as well if you are kind of struggling with your playing at the moment in terms of sort of, you know, whether you're stuck in a bit of a rut or if there's just things that you're struggling with or wanting to learn more about. If you leave a comment down below, I'll try to make some videos in the new year, some more lesson-based content. And let me know if you enjoy the lesson-based videos as well. I know I've done a few different video types recently. Um, I've done obviously things about guitars, a little bit of stuff about gear, some more philosophical videos, I suppose, about music and about approach to guitar. And I've obviously done lessons. So let me know what type of content you enjoy. Um, thank you all for your support again. And um, this is my last video of the year, but I'll be back next week with another one. So if you haven't already, do consider hitting the subscribe button. And if you do, want to learn some more guitar you know during these next few days i do have a lesson playlist which i will link here or here uh, there's a few different videos there about the cage system which might make some of what i've shown today make a little bit more sense as always guys thank you so much for watching happy new year hope you're all doing well and i'll see you all very soon in a few days time for another video all right take care folks <laughs>